Hello, today we are going to be looking at a Linux privilege escalation vulnerability with the TAR binary and wildcards. So I've set up my server here to start a cron job running every minute and it runs this binary user local bin backup.sh and the issue with this binary is that it goes into the games directory in their home directory and then it runs the tar binary which creates a backup saved right here for right here this wild card i'll make that look better right here this wild card essentially says grab everything in this directory the home james and put it into a backup.tar.gz file so what we're going to do is exploit this and pass some commands that tar interprets as actual executable commands and not files themselves so for a quick reference, if we just do the help page for tar and scroll up, there is a command that we can use called tac tac checkpoint action. I believe it's down here, right here. So what this does is essentially when you get to a certain checkpoint, start an action and an action could be anything like an executable. So what we need to do is verify that we are in the right directory. So home James, so this script is going to go into the home slash James directory. And next, we need to create the checkpoint action flag as a file name so that it looks like we have a legitimate file, but actually it's, it's going to be executed. So let's just echo some empty space into tac tac checkpoint tag action equals exec and then we want to run our uh, reverse shell to escalate our privileges to the root user that is running this binary so we'll do slash attack exec and then shell dot elf and as we can see we have checkpoint action shell dot elf so what this is going to do is it's going to run tar ccf temp backup and then this asterisk is going to interpret this as a flag like this is actually being run as part of the command. And then it'll take local.txt and put it in this backup tar zz. But then we need a second um, flag. So we're gonna run our echo command again, but this time we're gonna do checkpoint equals one. So what this is basically saying is just telling the tar binary that we've hit a checkpoint. So now we should execute on this action shell.elf. We're gonna hit enter. And now we just need a quick reverse shell which I will generate right now with Linux, uh, reverse shell with MSF Venom. And I'll start my Python server. I'll just do this ramp and then grab it real quick. And it has to be in the same directory because we've said shell, shell.elf. Um, I've had issues with running temp shell.elf or running it from a different directory. So I recommend just placing it in the same directory that the binary is gonna be um, the tar binary is going to be back up, backing up to. So let's just grab shell.elf. And looks like in about 30 seconds, the cron tab is going to run again. So we need to quickly make shell.elf executable and then start our reverse shell listener over here. Let me do that up here. And I'm also just going to run process spy. Uh, this is an easy. Thing you can download off GitHub and just shows you every single running process on the machine so we can verify that the binary actually ran. So what's going to happen is the tar command is going to run. It'll say, well, at checkpoint one, oh, and it just ran. So what happened was it ran the CZF flags on temp backup tar.gz and it executed these flags because it thought that these were actual flags being uh, passed to the command and not files. And then it took these two files and put them in the backup file that uh, was just created. So as a result of that, it executed shell.elf, which gave us a revert shell. And we have root user or whoever would be running this cron tab um, binary right here, we would have access to their shell. So this was just a quick privilege escalation video um, the server I used right here was from Obsex providing, providing Grounds machine right here called Blogger. 
So if you want to try this yourself, you can hop on it and um, exploit it. But you could also just create this yourself. It's pretty easy. You just create the backup.sh folder with this code in it, and then you add a cron tab and follow the steps that I just did in this in this video. Thank you for watching, and I will see you next time.